Hey everybody, Jimmy from the Triple C Collective coming back with you for another Superhero Saturday with episode 2 of Moon Knight uh, Summon the Suit. Uh, so episode 2 was a little bit uh, um, was different in the beginning actually um, because the first episode kind of gave us a little bit of a prologue and then it kind of jumped into the uh, Marvel logo and everything like that and all the like classic music everyone um, has come to recognize over the last 10 plus years now um, so this episode didn't have that it just kind of opened with the Marvel logo and then just uh, jumped right on into it which w which is always awesome because a lot of times like people for prologues and stuff like will try and throw like little hints at things to come um i kind of like just taking the uh, just taking the episode as it comes and that was really cool something um again really different than they did in episode one um with all of that being said though this episode also felt very much so like uh, like definitely the second part of what they wanted to show in episode one and <clears throat> it really begs the question at the beginning of this that I'm going to ask and I'll ask it at the end too is um, should we have actually gotten two episodes at first of um of moon knight here instead of getting the one episode a week because they dropped two of hawkeye i believe at first and i think wandavision might have had one maybe two dropped right away um but like i don't know um i no, i didn't hate the first episode i actually really liked the first episode a lot and i really like this episode i think this episode I guess in the idea of only watching the two, the this episode is maybe better than the first one, but like I don't know, I don't want to knock that first episode because I thought it was cool. It set up the world pretty well, um, and this one kind of continues on that journey a little bit more. Here uh, we see the episode basically opens with <clears throat> Stephen hearing all kinds of roars and growls and like all of this kind of craziness as he's <laughs> as he's been going through at least um in episode one to now so he gets up and he like bolts out of bed and is like startled awake like it's a like it's a bad nightmare and stuff and runs from the bed and like gets yanked you know, it's a bit that I think we've seen in uh, the trailers, I believe, previous to, like, the show premiering. So that was a really great bit. It's something that they've actually done, um, or uh, that they've done with Oscar Isaac a lot, which is very interesting. And something that I didn't, I guess I never really paid attention to that much or never really, like, picked up on. I shouldn't say pay attention to, but maybe I didn't pick up on that much in uh oscar isaac's like previous work and that is like his physical comedy like he's really great like in that first episode when he's like trying to hand him like the scare and like all of that is just amazing he's so good he's so funny um and it like like it works so well with uh <clears throat> with Oscar Isaac and how he does it and how he's portraying, um, you know, Steven and like, uh, Steven Grant and Mark Spector and stuff. And like, it's great. Um, he gets to really play this like duality thing here. That's really awesome. And <clears throat> so he, uh, he, he wakes up, um, you know, he gets himself together, unchained and everything. He's asking, you know, he's talking to the mirror, looking to see if Mark's there for him. If, uh, you know, if he's going to hear Conchu, uh, the moon god or anything like that. And then he goes to work. Um, you know, when he gets to work, obviously there's the issue from the night before. He, you know, he killed that jackal in the bathroom and then he, uh, you know, um, just left. And obviously that bathroom was destroyed from that fight. We saw it. We saw the jackal break down the door and everything like that. Um, so he walks into work and, the, you know, we're, we're at the museum again, which is really great. I love that they that they have Steven, like, set here in, <laughs> 
in like London at a museum as a like gift shop worker. It's something that I find um, extremely uh, funny and awesome. And uh, there's something extremely funny and awesome that I love about that character. And because like I don't really I haven't really known that much about Moon Knight previous to this. I could tell you big, broad strokes that almost any fan could, but I, I don't know the deep cuts. Um, like, I didn't know that the statue guy that we've seen is, like, a big, um, <clears throat> like, informant person that plays, like, a major role in, like, um, or maybe not a major role, but is, like, a ma uh, major recurring character throughout Moon Knight stories in, uh, I think it's Crawley. Crawley, you would say it. Um, but he's like a street level informant for him, and like it makes sense with him being a living statue and all of that stuff. But I'm I'm getting off track here. So he goes to work. He sees the pipes are burst. He's talking to the security guard. He wa he's rewatching the footage, and he, you know, um, one of the things that I want to like <clears throat> highlight is some of the dialogue and stuff here is. <laughs> um, is what Oscar Isaac Stevens says to the security guard. He's like, bruv, it's, it's going to melt your brain. Area 51, MI6, bruv. And I love that he says bruv. <laughs> it's so great. It's so awesome. Um, <clears throat> but, like, so Oscar Isaac and, like, the security guard, and then... <laughs> The security guard, through watching it, is like, or Oscar Isaac is telling the security guard, here, watch this. And it's just Oscar Isaac running around, running around. And then they see him run into the bathroom, and the security guard gets it, like, understands, like, oh, my God, you destroyed the loose. Larry and maintenance is going to shoot you. Like, <laughs> the security guard is um, subtly very funny because he's just, like, you know, is always giving, uh, Oscar Isaac and like, uh, <clears throat> Stephen Grant, like, you know, quote unquote, the business always giving him like razzes and stuff. And it's awesome. It's, a, it's, it's extremely funny. Um, but the way that he tells the security guard tells him, tells him that <laughs> Larry and maintenance is going to shoot him. is so funny to me. And I don't know why it's great though. Um, uh, but he's like, no, you know, like, uh, Oscar Isaac is telling the security guard, no, 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 there was a jackal, an Egyptian jackal, and then we get the, uh, like, Sherlock Holmes reference of the hounds of, uh, Bakersville, um, <clears throat> and they look at the final shot of it, and it's Oscar Isaac, walking out and Oscar Isaac is is looking at the screen and he's like that's not me and he's you know he's Steven and we know it's Mark Mark Spector um who's in it and it's really great this uh, the uh, this whole little bit here like Oscar Isaac got so excited he re he really showed himself being unhinged if I'm going to be honest and it was like really probably some of the best part of this is that, like, you just see him, like, you just see him unraveling as Steven. Like, it's just all coming out of control. Because the next bit is where he's meeting with his manager, like, HR and stuff, and he's getting fired. Uh, because they looked at the footage, they saw that he was the one who actually um, destroyed the building, or the building, destroyed the bathroom, and and uh everything fighting the jackal that nobody else could see um or at least didn't appear on the uh security footage uh but the the hr rep is like hey we're not going to press charges we know we've talked to your colleagues we know it's been a rough go about it for you a rough time um do you have anything on you that is from you know any merchandise or anything like that and he's like, no, I haven't, like, nicked anything. Like, he pulls out a cell phone and a key, the same ones that were hidden in the, uh, like, in his kitchen where we saw that Oscar Isaac was, or Mark, um, was pulling his uh, kitchen table 
out to go stand on to go hide a cell phone and a store and a key and uh storing a key up there a cell phone um so we see uh you know it, they they talk about the recent events here and the hr thing and i wonder if maybe it is the uh uh death of his mother that they're talking about maybe because we don't know if she's she's alive or anything yet so it could be could be that it could be uh you know it another unknown event i mean that's that's very true um usually with a case of like <laughs> kind of like a did almost sort of thing like that um there's usually some sort of trauma that's involved with it so like having some sort of traumatic event happen previous and that's what like led this all to happen and it's it it's interesting it's all uh very interesting on how they're doing this because um i do know like some of the later stuff of like moon knight i think it's like specifically like the jeff lemire run and i can't think of the guy or the artist um who jeff lemire teamed up with on it and i'm sorry um <clears throat> But they did a lot of, like, the mental health um, kind of aspect of it, or at least kind of, like, focused on that in a um, different kind of way and kind of worked that into their storyline. I think that was from, like, 2015 or 16. Um, either way, uh, the HR guys, like, we've got doctors we can get you in touch with and, like, you know, slides over a pamphlet to a to uh steven so that you know and while this is happening though uh once the doctor slides over the pamphlet to steven uh we get this like really weird squid game type music that's like do 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 type stuff and it's like really off-putting um and i it like it, it kind of gave me the feeling like um like this museum, this HR person, this thing is part of a bigger conspiracy or part of a bigger thing um, because it was very different music um, for it. But I don't know. Maybe it just stood out because Squid Game was wild, wild. And um, like so like all of that music from that show it's kind of still stuck with me in this sound. The music playing during this sounded very similar. And... Um, but it was, it, it was great. Um, they asked him again if he's nicked anything, um, you know, stolen anything. And the HR guy, like, after Steven's like, no, 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 I got nothing. HR guy points to Steven's name tag, and he's like, oh, okay. Puts it on the table and hands it over. And I almost wonder if that means that we're not going to see Steven. Because Steven is going away, sort of. Or is leaving us. The same way that Steven's actually leaving, um, you know, the museum. Because he's getting fired. Or because he got fired. Um, once he once he's done getting fired, he gives the name tag. He goes and sees his buddy, the living statue. And he talks with the, with the living statue. Of course, the living statue is just sitting there in his pose. Um... <clears throat> He tells a, you know, he tells the living statue, "Hey, I found some stuff in my flat, like a, uh, a cell phone and a key that I don't know where it goes to. Um, think it could go to a storage locker. Um, I think possibly, I don't know." Um, he hugs the statue because, in the end, like through talking, like him, just a one a one way conversation with the human statue, the living statue, uh, is basically saying, like, "Yeah, I should go look for this." For, for where this key goes, I, I think it's the storage, like, locker company, um, and yeah, I'm gonna go look. Uh, and then that's what he does. The next thing we see is Oscar Isaac looking in the storage locker. He goes to a guy, or not, he, he enters to go and talks to the worker of the storage units, and it's like, I need to, uh... I need to get into my locker. I think, uh, you know, it could be under my name, Stephen, Stephen Grant. It could be underneath uh, the name Mark. 
And the guy's like, oh, wait, I remember you. You're number 43, right? And, like, holds up the key. <clears throat> he holds up the key. And, uh, go, and he's let in by the worker. And he goes and he gets led to a storage storage unit that's, like, maybe size of a small garage or less and actually i remember kind of looking at it and being like wow that's actually kind of like a big storage unit but like i don't know i don't really know how uh, how necessarily all if there's like if all storage units are one size and it's just universal or whatever or i don't know how any of that works or if you can get like different ones and they just like have removable walls and you can combine two things or whatever i don't know how any of that works um so it's a big big place because it has um it has a bunch of totes that look like some sort of army military mercenary-esque type um totes a bunch of different shelving units there's a very simple cot with a like pillow and a blanket on there nothing like crazy or whatever and <clears throat> Steven starts snooping around in there, starts looking around. There's a bag next to the cot, and in the bag is a... In the bag, he pulls out a gun and starts looking through the bag some more, pulls out the scarab. The scarab he is holding in his hand. It begins to fly up and starts fluttering away. And then it starts pointing in a direction. And we don't know exactly what direction it was necessarily pointing in he just says it's not north he's like it's like a compass but it's not pointing north and uh and that's the same scarab that um we saw <clears throat> we saw him try and fight in the uh we saw him try and fight uh in the village where we first met Ethan Hawk in the first episode. And, uh, so yeah, you know, he, he's in there, he sees the gun in the bag. Um, in the bag is also the alien or er, the alias, the passport with Mark Spector on there. So we finally get the name Mark Spector and, um, spoilers. If like you didn't, if I like, didn't um I, don't know, I guess didn't give that for like moon knight or whatever like history and things um but that's one of his aliases like one of the main personalities that he has um <clears throat> mark specter like historically and like the comics and stuff has always been kind of like a mercenary kind of hired gun person and stuff which is why like then in the show he is the one who's um like you know taking over and then like you know steven wakes up and a bunch of people are dead or beat up or whatever it is um and so yeah it's it like it it, it snaps it all clicks and stuff for him and then um mark starts reaching out to uh to steven and they had they start having the conversation you know about talking with each other like you know steven's like you you know what what's going on here like what you 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 are like kidnapping my life you are stealing hours and days from me i can't I can't be a normal person i can't go on a date i can't do any like like what are you doing to me what what is going on here do i like i i have no control and or say in my body and like what the what is going on and like i the, like i i need to be able to do things i need to be able to date i would like to you know i would like to do simple things like that like ha like have a life and um so it's really interesting all of the uh like the back and forth that they have here and you know mark is like hey man you know there used to be a wall up between us like you never were any of the wiser to any of this stuff you never had any idea of what was going on but now all of a sudden there is no wall we it's like who's ever whatever <clears throat> 
we're switching back and forth now a lot more easily and i've had a lot of you know we get the we basically get it um alluded to that it, you know mark specter has been doing this for a while you know taking control going on these missions or whatever and he even says you know it's like who's ever is in control gets stronger you know if you're in control longer you get stronger control of will of like i am going to be the main personality you know when mark specter needs to save them like while they're driving you know a cupcake van down a mountain or whatever um and then when stephen grant just needs to you know go to work in the gift shop like Stephen grant can just go to work in the gift shop and you know mark specter can sleep and not be worried or bothered by any of that um <clears throat> but they mark is trying to convince steven to take a nap so that mark can finish this job so that they can you know get it over with and like get it finished with and just and just move on because once he is once mark is done serving kanchu and is done with the mission that um him and kanchu have been on and been working on <clears throat> he will be able to you know he'll he'll go away he doesn't need to do what he needs to do anymore and everything that he has been doing mark everything that mark has been doing recently he doesn't need to do anymore once he completes the mission with kanchu and uh you know the uh kanchu is uh is like mad at steven or is mad at mark like i thought you had control i thought that i thought he wasn't going to be an issue what's going on here and then steven's like you know what i'm just going to take this bag of all of this paraphernalia of all this illegal stuff the passports the money the gun everything that i i see in here and i'm just going to take it to the authorities turn myself in and then nobody can do anything we're going to be locked up then we get conchu again showing up and is like this is not part of the deal mark you know this was not part of our deal and he can't interfere i thought you had it under control and stuff and then we get like the creepy kind of like conchuness and like it's really cool it, it does really great flashing of the lights and stuff and like um like and it goes doo -doo, like flipping a switch but like big loud booms but like meant to mim it, it's great it's a great little bit of like horror and suspense here and it causes then um it goes on for um i don't know a minute or two or whatever um but it causes stephen grant to run out from the storage unit and trip and fall basically into the middle of the street and who arrives layla um before we move on though i really liked the storage uh locker room whatever that he had um it was really interesting getting an inside look a little bit more of uh mark because really we've only been with steven and in the first episode whenever mark was like in control or whatever um you know we we, we flashed you know we would flash in and out because we were staying with steven as our um as our main you know storyline um uh, not storyline uh main story we're following so like we stay with him throughout everything like he's our guy um and our window in as the audience and stuff and man it was cool all of this has been cool uh i like the way that they're peeling this apart and stuff I, it's it's neat no, you know it's an interesting um storytelling for sure because like i mean when it comes to like multiple person did formerly known as multiple personality disorder there's only a f there's a few flicks out there a few films you know movies and stuff out there um on the tv side i actually don't really know much about that but i know there's a few movies out there um that do it and there's even one that has like a real major twist to it um um from like the early 90s with edward norton and stuff that's a really great one um fight club's another one that i'm sure a lot of people have seen anyhow this has been um 
all of this has been really great. I've really liked how, for somebody who doesn't know much other than like what you can probably find on a Wikipedia page about, um, and pro or probably even less than what's on there, um, about Moon Knight. I've really dug like what they're showing me, the world that they're kind of like putting him um, in. And I also like that it's in London. That like the one thing about the Marvel universe, or at least in the comic universe, is that they're until they get the West Coast like Avengers, they're all virtually in New York. They're all virtually op operate in and out of New York. Moon Knight usually operates in and out of New York City, along with like the likes of like Daredevil and Spider Man and Punisher and stuff like he. He's in a little bit more of that uh, street level kind of stuff, and um, so it's so it's interesting that they've kind of made him worldwide in this, and they place him that they give him Stephen, a British guy, as like the dominant um, personality that we're seeing as like the main road in this show, as opposed to doing what they probably Mark Spector. The American version is, is typically how he would have been like portrayed or introduced first, and then all of these other um, personalities begin to show. And um, yeah, so it's really cool. All of this stuff is really awesome so far. But <clears throat> he's running, he falls over, and he meets Layla. And while he is uh, riding with Layla, she explains that she's his wife. Stop with the accent. And, you know, Steven's just like, just j just get me. Um, just get me to my flat. That's all I ask. Just get me to my flat. And, you know, I'll explain everything to you there. And it'll be awesome. Uh, and he doesn't say that. But, like, he's like, I'll explain everything. We'll talk. And, and we'll figure it all out then. Um, which was really cool. Uh, that whole riding on like a scooter Vespa kind of thing that they had going on there. It didn't really look like a full on motorcycle. It could have been though. Um, now I think about it. It could have been like a dirt bike almost looking motorcycle now that I really think about it. Maybe that's why I didn't think it looked like a motorcycle. Anyhow, um, they get to Steven's flat. She sees that he has a fish. He's talking about, um, how uh he's you know he talks to his mom or at least calls his mom and uh she's like oh that's great so you guys you two are, are like talking and stuff again because you guys weren't talking before or at least it when she was in mark's life in their life um they weren't really uh talking at that point so she thought that was really great and awesome and uh this kind of explains then what i was asking before that yes mark specter's mother is still alive could be why um stephen grant is uh always talking to like a voicemail always calling an American woman like when she's out of the house or asleep herself because of the time difference or whatever. Um, and so it's really interesting to think that every time he's leaving a message, Stephen Grant, on who would presumably be Mark Spector's mom, then... Um, that a British guy <laughs> is calling her all the time <laughs> is like extremely funny to me. Um, I find that, I, I just find that absolutely hilarious. Um, but they, they, they kind of break down a little bit more of what's going on with, um, you know, Steven overall and stuff here. You know, they got the fish, um, uh, we get Mark saying, you know, to Steven, like, you know, she shouldn't be here. We got to get her out of here. Um, Steven, oh, and Steven says, this is my mom's flat. And that's where uh, Layla's like, oh, so you guys are 
talking again. That's great. That's awesome. Um, you know, and that's what I meant about the voicemail thing before that. <clears throat> And, uh, <laughs> so they, they start speaking French because Layla's walking around the apartment as Steven is still trying to explain, like, I'm Steven Grant. I don't know who Mark is. I, I, I don't know how any of this is like working or happening or why any of this is going on. Um, uh, and then this, and like, this is... This is kind of where like lines kind of start to get blurred or at least they kind of are blurring the lines almost between Steven and Mark here because we start to find out that like, um, you know, Steven, he worked at the, the Egyptian museum. He was teaching himself hieroglyphics. They were able to talk about how it's more of an alphabet than an actual, um, it's more of an alphabet than actual like stories or anything like that is really how um hieroglyphics like work is what they were really saying and um all of it was it was really interesting because then they start speaking poetry in french and seems like this is my favorite you know poet and uh leila's like no it's it, it's mine so then you almost wonder did Mark end up, is Mark really the dominant personality? We've just been introduced to Steven because Steven has now broken down this new wall between Mark and Steven. As they, as Mark said it in the uh, show, in the, in the episode here. And um, it's great. It's, it, 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 it's so interesting now is it that way? Is it this way? What's going on here? It's really cool. It's really interesting. Um, but like it, at the same time, the story is still moving forward. It's not like, um, you know, we, we, we get the idea that Ethan Hawke is after the scarab. Mark is after the scarab because Kanchu um, wants the scarab. And then we also find out in this scene here with Layla being in the apartment, Layla sees the scarab and then Layla drops the bomb on uh, Steven that they went on adventures and stuff together. It seemed like Mark and Layla were like mercenary spy assassin partners slash husband and wife. Um, so like that was really like, kind of interesting and eye-opening and stuff um for it because then um then the cops come and knock on the door and kind of like break this up um but before that there's one big thing that they talk about before that steven said or uh you know layla throws down divorce papers and steven's like i would never divorce you you seem lovely why would i do that and Mark is all like, you know, just, uh, why would you say things like that or whatever? And, you know, I'm trying to protect her. You know, we don't, <clears throat> we need to keep her safe, blah, 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 doing that, um, saying all of that to him. Then we get the police knocking on the door, which kind of breaks up all of that. Uh, Layla is able to, um, to grab the, uh, scarab and, <clears throat> get out the window of the bathroom as the police get there. The police are on the, uh, or actually no, Layla just goes to hide on the roof. I don't think she actually takes the scarab, but, um, the police grab, uh, Steven, take him with him to go find, um, uh, the Harrow. Um, Ethan Hawke's character because the dude has the like whatever scales on his forearm tattooed on his forearm or whatever and like showing that he's a member of the cult or whatever they are um, the, poli the police take him away Layla's on the roof 
Layla follows the police um, discreetly on like that motorcycle type thing, um, and we get uh, we get Haro. Uh, we also get uh, Steven saying that he's never going to give Mark control because Mark is asking for control, saying like, "Steven, I can get us out of this, bud. I can get us out of this. You just got to give me control. You just got to give me the control, and we can get out of this." And Mark is, or uh, Stephen is not having any of that. Stephen is like, I'm never going to give you control again. I can't believe that you've done all of this stuff and like everything that's happening. Um, Harlow's listening in though. Ethan Hawke's listening in because he's trying to get a figure of what is going on with Stephen Grant, his connection to Conchu, his connection to Mark. And we get it by, you know, Haro ripping open the door and Steven, you know, being handcuffed from the police, falling out onto the, uh, um, <clears throat> falling out onto the, uh, ground there. Excuse me. Falling out onto the ground and, uh, Haro picking him up. And leading him then to um, basically through a walkthrough of his little town thing set up that he has going on there locally. And um, when I say going on there locally, I mean uh, it is like Haro's town that we saw earlier. They're walking. They, they got there through a different way. And we're wa we see him walking through. He's picking up vegetables and he's talking. And, he, and he's very boldly explaining what um, Kanchu is like, the moon god, things like that. Stephen Grant is very scared and stuff. Kanchu starts throwing things around but can't actually do anything. Um... Because what Haro is finding or is explaining to Steven that he doesn't actually have to do or he doesn't actually have to listen to Kanchu, which is interesting that Kanchu can make demands and say like, hey, I want you to do this or we need to do this or this is the plan or whatever. But he doesn't actually have to do that. Um, he can ignore him and just keep on going, which was, which is interesting because it seems like Mark is more at the mercy of Kanchu than what Steven is. And maybe this is why, um, they always kind of kept Steven separated because Steven isn't a mercenary with like trained fighting skills and stuff the same way that Mark is and can be beneficial to, Kanchu and um, Kanchu and his whole uh, his whole delivering of justice and everything like that, um, his whole his whole plan that he that he's trying to get. But Haro is um, gives one little bit of dialogue here that is really great and really eye opening to Kanchu and the Moon God. And then also the association with like DID is, is that Haro asked the question to, you know, Steven, were you picked because your mind is so easy to break or because it was broken already? Again, which goes, which leans into the DID of were you. You know, did you have this traumatic event that then, you know, triggered this DID for you and left you then susceptible to this moon god coming in and like kind of, you know, having you be an avatar for his body or have you, Stephen Grant slash Mark Spector be the avatar now for this Egyptian moon god. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, it's wild, and uh, we also get uh, we get Haro asking like, "Do you see him? Can you hear him? What does he say?" And Stephen Grant asks like, "What can can you hear him? Can you see him as well?" And we get Haro saying, "I am 
uh, I no longer have that privilege, um, you know. And he, uh, <laughs> Haro's like, is, is Kanchu telling you to kill me? And uh, we see Kanchu, like, and the little bee, or not a little, it's like a big old beak, but the Kanchu and his beak coming up, like, right onto the side of, like, Ethan Hawk here. And we've got Stephen Grant here. And it, like, just come here and it's like, kill him, break his windpipe. Ah, it's great. It's really creepy and awesome. Um, actually, just on a side note, the design that they have of Kanchu is really, really um, awesome. He, he looks a little like a kind of has like a clothing cross of like almost looking like mummy wraps but with a cape he's got like a skull beak that again has like almost like a mummy wrap to it um kind of look to it i mean they could be trying to go like just a full-on like moon rocky kind of not like the movie rocky but like moon and rock rubble kind of look that you would get from like the gray or white moon um so yeah that was all really great but we learned about haro here that he doesn't have that privilege anymore of hearing or seeing Kanchu, um uh, which is interesting and that also leads them to, you know, Haro also saying the, uh, you know, the thing about, like, you don't have to do everything that he asks. Um, as they're continuing to walk through town, grabbing the, like, different food or whatever, showing the different um, vegetables and stuff that have been grown, they, uh, Haro is talking to another member of his cult in Mandarin, um, and, uh, Haro's like, yeah, we all strive to learn, um, at least three languages and we all teach each other. So yeah, that's what we try and do here and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And that's interesting. Um, you know, everyone sharing your knowledge and stuff like that. Like interesting idea. Um, all trying to better each other and become better people and, and stuff, you know, knowledge is power. Uh, <coughs> the uh, <laughs> we get Ethan Hawk is great. Let me just tell you this like last little bit here of Ethan Hawk is just fantastic. Ethan Hawk is just amazing. Um, he's just giving a performance of a lifetime that I just absolutely freaking adore. It's so good. Um, but he taught, he, he, Ethan Hawke then starts making fun of Kanchu, saying that he's like temper tantrums. He's like a little child. Um, nobody takes him seriously. Uh, you know, and he, uh, he, he does his punishments too late to people who have already done evil. Um, you know, Haro admits that he was the previous avatar, which is kind of a big thing that he was the previous avatar for Kanchu before Steven and Mark were the avatars, which is interesting. Um, and then, uh, you know, <laughs> Steven corrects Haro is like, Oh no, no, no. That's the little American man inside of me. And that's like, that's really funny. Um, then we get like to kind of the idea of what Amet and Haro and stuff like are kind of after what they're trying to do. We kind of get a little bit of that. They're trying to bring back Amet the same way that, you know, like, um, Kanchu is able to have an avatar. Well, the last time that, um, you know, Matt had a, an avatar. Uh, she was, like, betrayed by the avatar and stuff. And, um, you know, all of, all of that that we heard in, like, the legend and everything in that first episode when, uh, <clears throat> when Haro visited uh, Stephen at the museum. And then, but 
Stephen asks the question of, um, you know, prejudges evil, like before the fact, isn't I still judging someone innocent? And, you know, like, he's like, I've thought about killing my boss, but I'd never actually do it. Um, what about a child? Like, are you just going to be killing innocent children? You're all cool with that for something that they might do in 30 years? Um, instead of like what he doesn't say is the idea of like, oh, if you can see that they're going to do that, well, can't we write that? Can't we try and like change that, um, deviant path, you know? And try and lead them back to the good instead of just abolishing them completely and getting rid of them. Um, killing them, like give the child a chance to learn better than what you saw or whatever. I guess not, not at least in Annette's um, judging power. Uh, and the Ethan Hawke then explains the Avatar... The first avatar of a met was given the cane. It has a sliver of the cane, or the cane has a sliver of a met's power. And um, they ask for the scarab. And he, Steven's like, I don't have it. I don't know where it is. I can't help you. And then we get, bam, Layla. Layla <clears throat> shows up with the scarab. She was following, um, you know, everybody. She was following them here. And comes in at the right time and she she gives us, you know, like she gives us the episode title name. She gets to she gets to Steven and is like, come on, we gotta do this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get out of here. They fight it, like she fights, leads them out of there, and she's like, Come on, summon the suit. Summon the suit. And Steven's like, What do you mean summon the suit? I don't I, I summon what suit? What do, you, what do you mean, summon the suit? Summon the suit doesn't make sense. I don't know what you are telling me. And it's really interesting because, like, then it's the idea of, uh, uh, it's the, it, like, it, he just can't get the suit. He can't, he doesn't know what he's doing. Mark should be here in this situation, but Steven wants to figure it out. And Kanchu is just all sorts of, pissed off but like this is another thing of like Layla like really not believing but now kind of like understanding what Steven has been saying of like I'm really not who you think I am right now like this isn't a disguise or a ruse or anything like that like really something's going on here and um this is great but what happens is Haro summons another jackal and this is where we get the explanation of what happens Steven starts freaking out. He can see the jackal because he has Kanchu. And Kanchu can see the jackal. He has that vision. He has that power. Um, Layla doesn't have Kanchu attached to him. Layla can't see the jackal. And this all makes sense. It makes sense on why we couldn't see it on the security camera tape either because the jackal was never recorded on that. I, I mean, I say tape, but it's probably like a digital SD card or really is what they probably have it on. I doubt that they actually use like things of like real tape or whatever anymore, like reels of tape. Um, yeah, I don't think they do. I mean, they do that for movies still. 35 millimeter film, I think. They might all shoot it on digital. Some people might still shoot it on film. That's a, that's a discussion for a whole nother whole other video <laughs> and uh but yeah we get uh we get uh he can't summon the suit they're they're the jackal is coming and like you know uh knocks him out the window and conchu's like summon the suit as he's like falling down and he falls and we get an awesome shot from a cover of the jeff lemire comic again of specter like adjusting his ties in a really nice like tux like a three-piece kind of looking suit and stuff like he's looking nice he's, he's looking real flashy and it is 
it, exactly like one of the covers that they did and exactly like the design from that Jeff Lemire run. And I am so sorry I forgot that artist's name. Um, and it's like, it's awesome because he falls down. <clears throat> he gets not, he, he falls down. He gets up. Mar Mark starts talking to him and he's like, Oi, Steven, what, what are we wearing here, mate? Like, what, what are you doing here? Um, she said I needed a, and like Stephen's like she said I needed a suit so like I just th thought of a suit and this is what I thought of and he's like but damn I do look good um, and Mar <laughs> Mark's like no the ceremonial <laughs> Kanchu ceremonial armor from his ten t from his temple not Psycho Colonel Sanders <laughs> which was actually a really great again Another great zinger. I love that one. That, that was another really good one. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> we get Steven being like, well, like, why are you, why are you mad at me? I don't know how any of this shit works, you know, like, and then he's like, I do look sharp though. Um, then we get a cut to Layla. We hear a little, like, or we see, Something fall on to Mar or fall on to Steven. We get a cut to Layla looking at a wall where she had just heard like a sound, like a thud. And then we get um we get Steven fighting the jackal now. And this goes on for a while. He's fighting the jackal, he's arguing with Mark. Um and we get some really great stuff here. Then one of the best things and one of my favorite things here is the chase. What ends up happening is that Steven gives up control after he's done, f after he attempts to fight and protect Layla and like control the Jackal and stop and stop the Jackal. Um, Steven's not really able to do that, but Mark um, is like, let me take over. I can, I can do this. We can, I can get us out of here. I can save everyone. We can protect them. Steven's like, fine. Okay. I'll, I'll let you take control. And we see it. We see Mark get into the normal. I shouldn't say the normal, but the usually seen um, Moon Knight um, outfit with like the hood and like the two half like moons as, you know, almost like blades, like. Um, like boomerangs, batarangs, that kind of thing, you know, kind of like those tools. And um, he chases after the jackal. He gets the jackal to run after him, and uh, we get some. We get a great rooftop chase scene, and it's awesome. It looks so cool. It it just looks so cool with the uh, London backdrops and like cityscapes and like skylines or whatever you want to call them. They're great. Um, it, it, it's, a, we also get the leaping over the moon between two buildings shot that we saw in the trailer. So basically at this point, a lot of what Disney has been doing is they'll show you a lot of really neat stuff in the trailers, but very, very specifically from the first, like two, possibly the third episode. Um, I know like some of the horror stuff of like the, um, of the elevator we saw a lot of that so i was a like it was good like horror and like tense and stuff but for me it didn't necessarily you know it, it's like what steven spielberg said when we get when he put the ben gardner like jump in you know he did one too many and um, we saw it. We saw it too early to be like truly appreciative of it. Um, and I kind of felt the same thing a little bit with the light flashing thing of the storage locker because I feel like we saw a little bit of that, but I don't think we saw enough of that because I it, like my first watch and the second watch. I was like, damn, that's still a really cool scene. Um, but I'm running a little long here, so I'm gonna try and wrap this up a little bit more quickly. But at the end of this chase scene. We get an awesome bit of Moon Knight jumping, throwing the jackal onto like a steeple and having it like be staked. And it very much so looks like a werewolf 
almost being like killed or staked on this like steeple top. And it's really interesting because Moon Knight originally first appeared in Werewolf by Night. We are getting a Werewolf by Night special, I believe, by Halloween. I don't know how long that special will be. I don't know if it'll be one episode, two episodes, a full-length movie, 45 minutes. I don't know what's going to happen with it. Um, but um, I'm pretty excited for it. I I'm really excited um, to see what they do with that um, Werewolf by Night and kind of add this like new horror aspect to the uh, Marvel and MCU and stuff. Like I'm super stoked. Um, but anyhow, he uh, he does that, kills the uh, jackal, and uh, it's so good. Mark starts checking himself. Doesn't have the scarab. Lost the scarab. We cut back to Layla. Layla sees that Haro is picking up the scarab. Um, and we get... Then Steven talks to Mark from, like, being inside and not being fully in control. Um, and... Uh, and it's... It's, it's really great. Because, um, you know, Mark kind of coaches Steven through it. Like, you know, just breathe, man. It'll be okay. Just breathe. You got to breathe your way through it. You know, like most of your energy is going to be spent up trying to like even just be a fly on the wall. Um, you know, you typically when the person in control has to kind of give up the control in order for you to take control kind of thing. Which will be interesting because I can't wait for that showdown to happen at some point. Because clearly... Mark will be in control of something at some point and Steven will not like what he's seeing and will try and take control and it'll be at a pivotal moment. It'll be cool to see that. Um, I'm like, I mean, they've, they, they've, they've really kind of, um, set that up with how they do like Conchu and Mark and, um, Steven and stuff. Um, that that that's gonna happen and it's gonna be sweet i'm i'm so i'm so stoked for it uh and you know but steven's like how long have you been doing this we're trying to figure it out like you know like i can't keep a gold goldfish alive i can't keep a job i can't date anyone like i want my life back i want i want to stop being i you're, not, you're a parasite you're eating away at me um uh, you know Mark is like, once I repay my debt, we will be good. Once I repay my debt, I will be, I will be good. You won't see me anymore. You won't have to worry about it. But I am trying right now to keep Kanchu away from Layla because he wants Layla to be my replacement avatar for him. And I don't want her to have to go through that. So I need to continue to do this. And we kind of get this like back and forth. Then like Steven kind of gets pushed to the back we get Kanchu and Mark then arguing about like all of that, taking the control, controlling Steven. And then, um, you know, we'll find Mark's like, we'll find another way to, you know, get to Amat and like her tomb and everything. Um, but in the meantime, like, what do you want to do? Where are we, uh, where are we going? And, uh, Kanchu's like, you should know where we're going. And where do we see them wake up? We see them wake up in Egypt with the pyramids looking out the window. And that is how this episode ends. And I am super stoked to see what episodes three, four, five, and six bring us. Um, I'm really excited about Moon Knight. Moon Knight's been a lot of fun. This has been a little bit of a longer episode. I definitely ran it longer than the episode itself. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but all of this has been a lot of fun. This has been a lot of, uh, this has been a great episode. Um, I'm Jimmy with the Triple C Collective. Thank you for joining me on this superhero Saturday of episode two of Moon Knight. Uh, summon the suit.